Okay, right here is a 1980 Bucyrus Erie 195B electric shovel. The 195B was first introduced by Bucyrus Erie in 1968, and the machine was not designed to be a replacement for the 190B model. The 195B was basically just a beefed up version of the 190B. In fact, both machines had the same physical dimensions, however the 195B gained 26% more in dipper pull, and the shovel itself weighed 26 tons more than a 190B. So now let's go and get a closer look at a 195 and I'll show you around the machine and tell you some history and information about it. The standard bucket capacity for a 195B can range anywhere from 12 to 16 cubic yards. This 195 is set up with a 16 cubic yard bucket. And if you look you can see the two hoist cables which run all the way up to the two top sheaves on the boom to lift the bucket up or lower it down. Now unlike a modern hydraulic shovel which uses a bull clam style bucket, a cable excavator uses a dipper, which is basically another name for the style bucket that the machine uses. How this bucket works is very simple. This is what's called the lip on the back of the bucket. And how it works is when the operator releases this cable, it will unpin the lock which will allow the lip to drop down so the material can exit the bucket through the bottom. Now keep in mind there are no hydraulics on this machine. So when the operator wants to close the lip on the bucket, he has to swing the dipper handle down. So that way the lip will hit the back of the bucket, the lock will be engaged, and the lip will be latched to the back of the bucket so the machine can resume digging. And as you can see, the 195B features the Bucyrus Design tubular dipper handle. And if you look up top in the center of the boom at the pivot point, that rope that you see running around that one sheave is used to extend the dipper handle out away from the shovel or to pull the handle in toward the shovel. And right here you can see the narrow crawler pads on the 195. Now keep in mind a big shovel like this is meant to be working on a solid ground surface. And if the floor that the shovel is working on is rocky, narrow crawler pads are less prone to bend, twist, and crack, whereas wider ones will. However, Bucyrus also offered optional wider pads for this machine depending on what the customer preferred and depending on the type of digging conditions that the machine would be working in. And this big bar that you see that runs across and connects both crawlers together is to reinforce the crawlers so that when the machine is tramming, the crawlers don't tend to bend or twist. And right here you can see the ring and all the individual rollers that'll swing the shovel when it's running. Right here you can see where the one swing motor connects to the ring. A 195B has two swing motors that are mounted 180 degrees from each other on each end of the ring. And this is to provide better contact area for the swing gear and help wear the ring more evenly. Here you can see all the individual rollers. And on the back you can see the drive sprocket to propel the machine. Now on the back of the 195, this is where the trailing cable would run out of the rear of the machine to supply the shovel with raw power. And this is also where the two electric propel motors are located to drive the lower works on the machine, which was one improvement that was made to the 195B when this machine was upgraded to the Series 2 version in 1978. And up top here you can see the rear counterweight. Located on the right hand side of the 195B is the access ladder. This is how operators and mechanics would get on and off this big shovel. The ladder is cable operated to raise and lower it. Now let's go up on top of the 195. And up top here you can see the cable which connects to the top of the ladder to raise it up or lower it down. Okay, here's the inside of the 195B, and as I said before, this is a full electric machine. On the back of the machine here, these are two big electric generators. Both are built by GE, and this is what creates all the power for the machine when it's in operation. And right over here you can see the second one. Now over here on the left hand side of the shovel, these are all the electrical compartments that you see lining the wall on the left hand side. And inside here are all the fuses, relays, and breakers to work the machine. And right here is the left side swing motor, which connects right down below to the ring, which I showed you outside. 
and when engaged this is what will swing the shovel to the left or swing it to the right. From out here we can get a better look at the boom on this machine. If you look up top you can see where the two sections of the boom are pinned together. The 195B featured a two section part boom. The lower section of this boom is pinned to the superstructure on the machine and also directly to the A-frame for increased strength, while the top section of the boom is pinned to allow for flexibility. And the benefit to this design was it reduced boom stresses, increased crowd breakout force, and allowed for longer, lighter boom lengths. And if you look right here, you can see the model plate. You can see where it says B. Cyrus and all the patent numbers on the machine. Okay, these are the two main control panels on the shovel. And all of these buttons that you see right here are to control the system, such as to turn it on or turn it off, to control the lube system, the exciters, stuff like that. And this area right here is where the mechanic or oiler would have full control over the machine to either turn the power off and shut the machine down, or to turn the machine on. Here you can see the right side swing motor and right here you can see the hoist drum with the cables that run all the way out to the top of the boom then down to pick the bucket up and down. This right here is a heavy weight maintenance crane. Its purpose is to get heavy machinery on and off the machine. Keep in mind that all of the big electrical machinery which I showed you inside the house is extremely heavy. So in case something such as a motor or generator breaks and needs to be sent out for rebuild or repair, the crane would be used to get the piece of machinery on and off the machine. Okay, here's what's left of the operator's cab on the 195B. Now, as you can see, this machine has been vandalized, the window's been smashed up, the seat's been torn off, but I'll show you what some of the hand levers and controls do. You can see that the cab is large and oversized and provides good visibility for the operator when he'd be running the machine. On the floor, you'll see two foot pedals. This is for the swing. And the two hand levers located on the right and left side control the digging functions on the machine. One controls the dipper handle, and the other one controls the hoist. And this switch you see over here located on the left side control panel is to switch the machine from the dig to propel mode. When this machine is engaged into the propel mode, you walk this machine off of the hand levers and then switch it back over to the dig position to resume digging. These big electric shovels are slow when they tram. And here you can see the start button, the shutoff button, and other switches to work other various functions on the machine. Here you can get a good view of the top of the house, the ventilation system, and you can see the ladder leading up to the top of the A-frame. The original first run of 195Bs were manufactured from 1968 to 1980. In 1978, Bucyrus introduced and improved and upgraded Series 1 version of the 195B. And by the time this machine was discontinued in 1998, 83 195B and 195B Series 1 machines had been built and put into service all around the world. The overall operating weight of this shovel is just shy of 400 tons. But there she is, a 1980 Bucyrus Series 195B Series 1.